Hi, today I'll be creating this animation and we'll be doing it with a single div and not that much CSS. So let's get started. We already have our div, we have some colors and we are going to begin with what I begin pretty much all my demos with. So on the body and on the div, we are going to set display grid. Right, now this maybe gives you an, an idea of what we're going to do next because we've set display grid on the div. So we cannot have children inside it. We said we're going to use a single div, but we can have pseudo elements before and after, right? Content because otherwise nothing's going to show up and we want them to be stacked one on top of the other. So they're going to occupy the same cell at the intersection between the first row and the first column. And if I could type, that would be great. Okay, now let's also give them a background so we can see stuff. But uh, yeah, that's not going to happen unless, uh, because by default they have a uh, height of zero. So let's set a padding, something like this, right? Now we should see something. Okay, this is not what we want. It's not a nice square shape. So we are going to fix that by setting place self center. The default is stretch. So by default, it stretches all across the parent, which is the body. Now having done this, let's move on to the background because we don't want that ugly black. We want those nice stripes, right? And we are going to create them with a repeating linear gradient. And if you are wondering why use a repeating linear gradient and not a linear gradient with a background size, well, I actually wrote an entire article about it and you are going to see as I code um, what kind of restrictions we're going to have. Anyway, so uh, we are going to start by setting a unit, a unit width for the stripes and a line width for those thin lines in between the stripes. So we are going to have our unit width for the stripes, something like that. And our line width is going to be much thinner. Uh, we are going to get the number of colors from there. So it's going to be the length of that color list. Uh, we are going to create the list, which is going to be initially empty the list of stops. And then we're going to populate it in a loop. So for i from zero all the way up to n, right? This list is going to be its previous version to which we are going to add first the color in the list at index i plus one. And it's plus one because the, the, um, this nth index is one based as opposed to loop index, which is zero based. So it's from zero, zero based. Here we're going to have zero initially, but we're going to change that later. And then we're going to have a calc value. So this is going to be, so the first stripe ends at a stripe width, right? And the second stripe ends at a stripe width plus a line width plus another stripe width. So at two stripe widths. So here we're going to have i plus one right times the stripe width plus i times the line width so the first stripe first stripe ends at one stripe width and plus zero line width the second stripe ends at two stripe width plus one line width and so on. So you can see the pattern. So here we have I plus one and here we have I. That's uh, the idea. Okay, now then the line is going to be pretty similar. So this is going to use current color. And uh, here we are going to have the same multiplier. Okay, so it's going to be i plus one multiplied with the line width. So the line width is one line width after the stripe. Okay. Now having done this, we are going to set this to a custom property. So we avoid repetition here. Right. And here, let's um, so it's going to be repeating linear gradient 90 degrees and we're going to use that uh, stop list and then the same thing once more 
and this one is going to be attached to 100%. This one, the first one is going to be attached to 0%, but that's the default. And we are going to have both of these have a background size of half. So the first one is going to cover this half, this half uh, on this side, and the other one is going to cover this other half on this other side. Okay. So here we're going to have background size, 50%. And you can see how nothing changes. And this is because the second one uh, repeats and overlaps the first one. So we need to set background repeat, no repeat, like that. OK. And now you can see how we have symmetry with respect to the middle. OK, but now we only want to have visible uh, this part from the middle to that corner. So basically the slice between this corner and this one, we want to have it visible. And the slice between this corner and this one. So basically this is kind of like um, rotated checkerboard. And let me just uh, show you. Um, I wrote this article last year uh, about background patterns simplified with conic gradients and this is the first thing I want to show you. So basically a conic gradient starts at 12 o'clock. This is the 0% point, right? Um, a quarter is 25%, right? Then half is 50%, right? And this is how we create a checkerboard pattern. So we have black here, but we can have any other color. Here we can have white, okay? And then it repeats itself from 50% because we have black again and then white again, okay? Now, we can also do a diagonal checkerboard, right? And we can do this by rotating this angle, so we have from a certain angle, right? So let's see what happens if we rotate by 45 degrees. Let's just uh, go slowly. You can see how it goes to 45, okay? And basically, we want the black to be seen and the white unseen. But uh, CSS masks, by default, they're alpha masks, meaning that they show what has an alpha of 1 and they mask out what has an alpha of 0. Okay, So we need that the visible part to have an alpha of 1, the invisible part an alpha of 0. So our mask is going to look like this. So it's pretty much what we had here, you can see this, right? Um, yeah. So it's going to look like that. Yeah. I cannot use a keyboard. <laughs> Not even when I copy paste things. This is going to be. Uh, transparent and this can be anything so we can make it red and the result is going to be the same and of course you need to add that back so again we use the custom property just uh, like for the list right there to avoid repetition in the generated code so that's all there is to it okay now we're going to want to rotate the after by 90 degrees so that uh, the slices of the after uh, point down and up, okay? So on the after pseudo element, we're going to have transform rotate 90 degrees. That looks nice. And then we're going to have another transform rotate, but by 45 degrees right here. And we want this to be in the middle vertically. So we need to explicitly set the height of the body to the height of the viewport, because at this point, it takes the height of its content, which is this diff. So like that. And this gives us an ugly scroll bar, which we can get rid of by zeroing the margin because it's caused by margin on the body. Or we can just go full nuclear and set overflow hidden. Both of them work. It doesn't matter which one we use. OK, now having done this, we are going to want to animate those lines. And we are going to do so by adding a distance right here. So we are going to have a distance value that we're going to add here 
and there as well. So actually we're going to register it as a custom property so so that we can animate it. As you may have guessed, this is going to be a length value. And initially, this is going to be, if I could type, that would be great. This is going to be zero pixels. And inherits is set to false because this is something we use on the pseudo elements, which don't have any children to inherit to. Okay, now having done this, we are going to add it in here like that and we're also going to add it here like that and then we can collapse the loop as well and here we're going to have keyframes D and it starts from so initially we are going to move by all three uh, stripes of those colors, right? And three lines after them, after each of them. So that's going to be, and we go in the negative direction, so minus one times n, the number of colors, which gives us the number of stripes, which is the length of the color list, okay, times the stripe width plus the line width. Yeah, I cannot use a keyboard. Okay, now here we're going to have animation D one second linear infinite and this should do it. Okay, we have the nice animation. One more thing I want to do here and it's just a prettifying touch. It doesn't really need to be there, but let's add it in anyway. So something like a shadow um, actually, let's make this semi-transparent. So we're going to use RGBA, something like that. Okay. Now, I'm not going to tweak it any further. I'm going to leave it at this. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, if you like the work that I'm putting out since early 2012, and you want me to be able to do more in the future, please consider supporting it. You can do so by being a cool cat and becoming a patron on Patreon. Or if monthly support is not your style, there's the option of one-time donation. Or you can make the stray cat happy with a gift of her wish list. Or you could at least share this to show the role of Kimi Nami CSS these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!